What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number 77 today of the My Player Career Mode. Today's episode, we have got five games for you all to enjoy and the title race is really hotting up. We're getting closer and closer to the end of the season, but it's just so close at the top. Checking out how many appearances Ben has made so far in his career. He's played 256 games and he's been part of 100 and what, 30, no, 100, yeah, 130, uh, 233 goals, sorry, within those games. My maths today is not the strong point, but regardless, I want to say as well, thank you for your continued support. I might be live streaming later on. Um, the, the beauty about it as well, guys, is that I'm hopefully going to get some of you involved in the live stream because later on when I go live... I want to make it like a kind of live stream subspecial type thing. So if I do go live, you will know what we're going to be doing. But if I don't, then I apologize. I need to get the thumbnail sorted for it. And we'll go live later on at probably 5 or 6 p.m. UK time. That's the aim anyways. And it's going to be quite fun because obviously I've had a lot of people in the past asking me, can I do stuff with subscribers? Can we, can we play games together? So I've decided, you know what, as a live stream kind of fun thing, I am going to be trying to do that later on. So do tune in if you want to play. Unfortunately, it is only Xbox because I don't own a PlayStation. So for anybody who follows me on PlayStation, that might come later on, like, you know, down the line. But for now, it is just Xbox alone. Sorry, guys, to all of you PlayStation players. But you can still watch the stream and still enjoy it and take part that way. But anyways, let's get into today's My Player episode. So the first game comes in the Premier League against Watford, who in real life defeated Chelsea yesterday by four goals to one. But this game against Watford showcased just how bad United have been at creating chances this season because it took 71 minutes and the chance itself wasn't really a clear-cut chance. Ben threw, but he makes the goalkeeper have to make a decent save. And then as Man United kept pushing on to try and find what would have been a late winner, a cross gets whipped in, Pogba in towards the middle, the Kaku's there to meet it, but a fantastic stop from Alban Lafont denies the big Belgian. And then from the next corner, it's whipped in towards the near post, there is the Kaku again, glancing header goalwards, but it's wide of the far corner and he can't find the bottom corner there. So unfortunately, Man United looked like they were heading for a point from this one, but Watford... Late on, they tried to put pressure on, couldn't do it. United, one lofted pass up the field of play. Martial tries to bring it down, can't win it against Klein, but gets it the second time of asking. It's actually not even Anthony Martial, it's, it's Martins actually. But it is then played through to Anthony Martial, who again is met by Alban Lafont, who keeps out Manchester United at home. So in the title race itself, it's not an ideal point to pick up here. Watford did their best in order to hold United to a nil-nil draw. And he just showcased United's, uh, I guess... They're problems at the moment because they're so inconsistent. One game they can play really well. Other games they're barely creating any chances and, and not being able to get out of a nil-nil. You can see by the match facts, they had three real clear-cut chances, three on target. And uh, to say the least, Watford never really created anything. But yet they still got themselves a point. So you can't really complain at that, can you? But again, United not really being able to create chances, clear-cut ones and not score them is a bit of a problem at the moment. We're going to check out some players in the squad report because I wanted to check out some players and see what kind of uh, goal contributions they've had. So looking at Ben, he's been part of 34 goals in 40 appearances. Lukaku, part of 13 in 42. Three of them being goals himself. So I wanted to kind of see how these two were linking up because I felt like recent episodes, they hadn't done too badly. But then, you know, in terms of what they've actually done for the goal contribution for Lukaku, it's not still fantastic, is it? But the reason this episode could be so important is because the other team at the top, Chelsea, who are pretty much joint top with United at the moment, are the next game coming up. Stamford Bridge, the venue. This is the last time these two teams will meet in the Premier League this season. So this one, arguably, could be a title decider between the two clubs. Chelsea at home with the home advantage. They're top of the table on goal difference. United in second, of course. Their problem this season has been scoring goals. You can see there's a point in it between the two of them. But the goal difference, there's 15 separating the two sides. Chelsea on 37, United on 22. And that's been United's problem. Not scoring enough goals this season. And that's going to be probably what will come back to haunt them if it does go to goal difference the title. So we'll see. But for now, Chelsea, a decent side. Five at the back with the two in midfield with the front three. They've got a decent bench as well. But for United, I would say their team is the stronger of the two. You can see it's a stacked squad for both teams. And this is going to be a really entertaining game. 28 minutes into it. Although United haven't created many chances against the lesser teams, they certainly got a chance here early on. 30 minutes in, across the face of goal. Martins back to Pogba. And his strike is wide of the goal. And I felt he should have done better with that one. I thought he was going to get it on target. Unfortunately, just was not meant to be. And then as we're getting closer to half time. 
Chelsea starting to feel their way into the game a little bit at home, but it's given away. Ben, good work to win it back. Finds Pogba. Pogba goes back to the right back. Eventually, you can see Ben gets sent in down the right-hand side. Martin's here giving the ball away to him. A little one-two with the right back. Gets in behind. You can see it's a great little ball across the face of goal. Courtois has to beat it out. It's brilliant defensive play up until Courtois makes the foul for the penalty. Chelsea did everything right there, blocking the shots, making sure that it didn't quite go. The only complaint you could have is maybe Courtois should have actually caught the ball when Ben put his low cross in. But then he just comes out and it's literally, he's got two decisions to make here. Does he allow Martial to maybe put the ball in or hope that his defender's going to block it or do what he did there and try and win the ball from him? Unfortunately, though, goes straight through the back of Anthony Martial and gives away the penalty. Now, from the spot, the Frenchman steps up, Courtois stays down the middle, Martial goes to the side and it is United taking the lead on the stroke of half time. What an important goal that could be to decide this title race. You know, it really is this close between the two clubs. And at half time, it looks like United are going to be the side heading in at a goal to nil up. Great penalty from Martial, actually, to be honest. I was not expecting that to... Uh, to be right in the corner as it was. I mean, Courtois, if he'd have guessed the right way, maybe still wouldn't have even saved that. But still, 1-0 up, second half beginning. Chelsea growing into the game a little bit. N'Golo Kante here, you can see, finding Morata. Morata, good turn, gets his strike away. But he couldn't hit the target. Very much like Paul Pogba in the first half. Two very disappointing strikes from two very good players. You'd expect much more from the both of those guys. And it's a lifeline for Manchester United, who stay in at 1-0 up. Now... Continuing on, though, five minutes from time, they were just looking to shore up this 1-0 win, but they actually had a chance to make it two. Martins giving it down the right to Ben. Ben, lovely little cut inside. You can see he gets past Ferenzi, gives it backwards to Martins there. Nice pass back through. Great ball towards the back post. It comes back off of the post onto the back of Courtois. And on another day, maybe it would have bounced off him into the back of the net. This day, not quite lucky enough as it goes out. But then, as the 90th minute was, uh, was looming and the whistle was going to be blown... Chelsea doing everything they could to try and keep at United. Not quite good enough to get an equaliser for themselves. And it ended up being United winning this battle out. Which means now they are top of the Premier League. It is completely within their hands. If they can win their remaining games, they will be champions no matter what Chelsea can do in their games. Courtois very, very frustrated with himself. You can see he was the man to give away the penalty and arguably... There isn't really much he could have done, to be honest. He can't really say that it's that bad from him because he either had to make that decision to try and win it or Martial pretty much would have been able to put it in. So, I mean, you can't really complain and say it's completely his fault. But for Chelsea, they had a job to do at home and they didn't do it. A point would have kept them top, to be honest. And on another day, they would have scored that Morata chance. So maybe it would have been 1-1. But regardless... It is great for Manchester United and Ben. It now puts them in, as I said, pole position for the title. It is completely within their hands themselves. And I suppose now, as you're looking at the table, there's only, what, nine games to go? And they win, I would say, seven of those nine. Personally, I think that that'll be enough to be champions. So there is still some tough games to come, but United are in pole position. And, and two points ahead... They're five points ahead now, Spurs, who you can't really write out just yet because they're still within points distance of it. I'm saying it like the only two are in this are Chelsea and United, but it's not the case. Spurs are still within the shout as well, so we have to keep tabs on those guys. And speaking of, Spurs, we're going to a different London club. Now it's the turn of West Ham United heading over to the London Stadium to take these guys on. And they've actually got a decent squad. They've made some good signings, and this might be quite tough for Manchester United here. Of course, off the back of a very good win by a goal to nil against Chelsea, You'd like to think they'd be able to keep momentum going and pick up another three points here. We're going to find out if that is the case. But as I said, going on to the signings they've made, they've got some very good players at the club. They've got Silicon in between the sticks now. They've managed to lure him away from Barcelona, which I was surprised about as well. Of course, they usually have maybe a couple of players like Alban Lafont I've seen there before, but he's, of course, now at Watford instead. And they've got some interesting players as well outfield. If we take a look at their side, Silicon, as I said, they've got Sergio Roberto, formerly of Barca as well. Uh, Obiang Dendonka, and uh, just it's a very, very decent side from West Ham, one that can be uh, can be good on their day. Now, for United, it's pretty much the same side that we're used to seeing, barring a couple of players coming into it. Milik, of course, up top as well. Not a bad replacement for Romelu, and he will do a decent job, I hope, in the side today. Now, the first chance actually fell the way of West Ham United. 14 minutes in, 
They gave away the ball down the right-hand side, but then Ben gives it straight back to them. Sergio Roberto, good defensive work. Obiang finds its way through, and Lanzini with the strike sends it wide of the post, though, inside 16 minutes. It could have been a dream start for West Ham United. Not quite meant to be, though, because the strike from Lanzini wasn't on target. And we're seeing a recurring theme here, players missing the target completely. On about that, actually, I wanted to say a couple of people have been asking me what the slider settings are. Everything is the same, barring the CPU goalkeeper, which is at 65 to make it more difficult to score, I guess. So that is what I play with as Ben here through on goal. Sillerson makes a good save to deny it, the young Englishman there from giving him the lead. And now from the corner, it's going to get whipped in. But we know United's aerial presence from corners, not exactly the greatest. We haven't scored many of them this season. We haven't scored many goals this season, but someone who's close... Is that man again? Ben sends a right-footed shot goalwards. It came back off the top of the crossbar. I honestly expected that to be 1-0 to United. I was wheeling away in celebration, but unfortunately, the crossbar had other ideas. And as we move on with the game, you can see it is just United hounding on the pressure at this point. Trying to find that opening goal, but can't do it just yet. Until this man, Ben, got the ball in the centre of the pitch. Beat his first man. Little one-two of Martins. Beat the second man. Beat the third man, gets past him, goes through, he's through one-on-one. -on -one, and it is so unfortunate for Sillerson because he makes a great one-handed save. It just is so unlucky that the ball just trickles across the line and gives United the lead. I mean, for United, Dreamland, they had to score and they did it. And you can say as well, defending-wise, not fantastic. But look at that. Sillerson was so close to keeping that effort out from Ben. On another day, he would have made that save and we wouldn't have scored. But for Ben, he's so happy to see it just trickling across the line as he's rolling, doing a roly-poly in the middle of the box there. I don't know what's going on with Ben. But regardless, he celebrates in style. And it is Manchester United who have taken the lead in this game. It's his 11th goal of the campaign so far for Ben. You can't really complain at that. But then, West Ham United decided, you know what? Anything you can do, we can do better. Pretty much like for like, Zikovic goes through. It's a save by David De Gea. It falls straight to another West Ham United player. And it's 1-1. As soon as it went to 1-0, United just switch off. Don't concentrate. The inconsistency comes back. And they concede a goal that puts it back to 1-1. And he's basically heading the game towards a point. So I spoke about their inconsistency. I'm going to keep talking about it because it's frustrating now. And again, you know, they were in pole position to take the three points from this one if they could defend. And they couldn't. And that's the reason now that they're only going to get a point out of this. And potentially... That might send Chelsea back top of the Premier League division, which in terms of a game, it's just frustrating because they were literally, what, 10 minutes away from registering the three points. They only had to defend and they couldn't do that. So it's disappointing, but as it stands, it's not the end of the world because Chelsea did win, which means, of course, they are now joint top. So it is what it is. And I mean, as I said before, this won't be the end. Even with the victory against Chelsea literally just before that, I was always thinking to myself that we're still going to have a very, very close end to the season. So it is going to be very close and we've still got a tough game to go against. I think we've still got to play Manchester City, maybe even Spurs again. So with eight games to go, I'm not too worried even with that defeat, uh, even with the draw there. Unless we start losing games and losing games to teams that we just shouldn't lose against, then I still feel pretty confident heading into the last eight games that United might come out on top at the end of the season. But we'll see, of course. And there's the last game of the Premier League to come before we move into their first leg of the Champions League in a moment. And it will come at home against Brighton and Hove Albion. Speaking of games that they shouldn't lose, this one is one of them. Defeat against Brighton is inconceivable. It is ridiculous. If they lose this game, I know Brighton are having a decent season. They're sat 12. But for a United Saint team that is challenging for the title, they cannot lose this game here. That is the only thing they have to worry about do not lose against Brighton otherwise you can pretty much kiss your title goodbye that's the side that's going into it it should be one that should be able to get the result we'll see how it's going to pan out in just a moment here Mourinho confident in his side Brighton's team's not terrible a few decent players in there but overall I've seen a couple of better sides and I don't quite know how they are sat 12 at the moment Brighton but that's just me looking at it from that perspective but from now the first chance came the way of United. Lukaku, great play to Ben. Ben gets in behind. Lovely little ball roll. Keeps close control in the box. But he's finishing. He's just a bit of a letdown. And that's not the way you want to go about scoring the opening goal of this game. Great play originally. And then he couldn't hit the target with his curling effort. Maybe he should have tried to square that possibly in towards the middle. But in the end, he chose to shoot. And it might have been the wrong decision. And as we move forward, second half got underway. And again, it was Ben on the ball. Lovely little ball to Lukaku. Lukaku to Anthony Martial. Continues his run towards the back post. And he just couldn't miss. If he'd have missed that one, 
you could have said, see you later, mate, get off the pitch, because that would have been horrendous. But I have to say, for United, who were drawing this game 0-0 and looking like they're heading for another disappointing point, they actually kept their composure. They did very, very well indeed. I was kind of wondering originally why Lukaku here, when he's sent through by Ben, just doesn't try and take a touch and shoot that. But maybe that goes to the fact that he's only scored three goals this season, and maybe that's why he chose not to do it. Great play anyway, and from Ben as well, he continued his run after playing the pass, so you have to say a good play from him to continue on with the run. He gets his reward for it as well, and Mourinho, that celebration is pretty much just relief, I would say. And it's his 12th goal of the season for Ben, and it's just a moment of relief for every Man United player on the pitch at that point, because they weren't brilliant in the first half, they weren't great at the start of the second, but they found the breakthrough regardless. And 20 minutes from time, all I was hoping for was that United could do their defensive work, the thing that they couldn't do before that, but they could have taken a second goal here as Ben again goes close with his right foot this time, denied by the post instead. And three minutes from time, Ben thought about taking it in the corner, decides to cross it instead, punched away by the goalkeeper, but it's one back by a Manchester United man. He goes close again here. Great little piece of skill on the edge of the area, shot away. It's over the top of the crossbar, but as it stood, they were heading for what could be a big three points here. And... Um, uh, three points it was for Manchester United so the worry about them defending kind of didn't come into play for me because they didn't have to do that much defending Brighton never really did much in the way of attacking and that's maybe the reason why they're sat 12 they've had kind of a comfortable season in the aspect that they haven't really threatened themselves I would say they didn't really commit many men forward even after going one no down they didn't want to you know kind of lose the game by three or four so they made sure they kept men behind they're, they're obviously thinking that maybe goal difference is going to play a part but Overall, it's been a decent season for Brighton. They can hold their heads high. They, they're finishing in at least 12th or, I would say, 14th position. And it's been a very, very good season for Brighton. So credit to them as we move into the last seven games of the season. But for now, that is where the Premier League will end. And as we go into Game 5 of today's episode, it is Champions League time. And it is time to get the first leg against PSV underway. Of course, United, they're holders of the Champions League. We don't want to bring Ben to United and have the situation where they're knocked out because of Ben. So they've obviously won it before. We want to see him win it again. We want to see Ben lift another Champions League trophy, and he might be able to do that here. His former club, Real Madrid, are not even in the knockout rounds, as you guys know. So it's not like he's left a club who are still in this. He's left a club who got knocked out to join a club who are still within the chance of winning the competition. Lukaku starts up top. He's had not a bad kind of campaign in the Champions League, actually, so can't really say too much about that one. PSV side, it's one that United should be able to deal with, as I've said before. I don't want to take, like, you know, kind of disrespect to any teams, but in terms of the side, United have a better side on paper and should be the favourites to go through here. We'll see how it's going to fare, though, as the game gets underway. The first chance came literally five minutes into it. The ball down the right from Ben, finding Martins. Martins eventually goes back inside to him. This is great work as well. What a touch that is. He fakes the defender out, says, I'm going to go inside. No, I'm not. I'm going back down the right. Lukaku is completely unmarked to the back post. Ben finds him. And just as easy as that, Manchester United took the lead. It was as if time just stopped for Manchester United. The defenders didn't know where he was going. You can see number five doesn't really commit himself. He thinks maybe Ben's going to try and cut inside on his stronger left foot. So you can understand the defensive kind of mindset from the defender with the aspect that he's showing him onto the right. But then nobody's picking up Romelu Lukaku at the back post. So if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that somebody is marking the open man at the back stick because Ben can still find a pass even with the weaker right side of his, uh, of his game. So... Lukaku gives them the lead, and that is Manchester United with the dream start here. All they need to do is not concede. If they don't concede an away goal, it is perfect. I will happily take a 1-0 aggregate lead into the second leg and not have to worry about conceding an away goal. But someone who wanted more was Ben, as he goes close with his right foot again. He's uh, seriously trying to improve his right game, or his game with his right-hand side of his play. Because, you know, he is predominantly left-footed. He's only got a two-star weak foot, so we want to see him trying to use his right a bit more. But even so, it's, it's a nice shot, but unfortunately just didn't quite catch it correctly. And then again, United dominated for most of the game here, and we were just hoping that, again, they could keep it up defensively. Great play from Ben. How on earth it's not 2-0? I don't know. What a fantastic save by the PSV goalkeeper. But still, I was disappointed, Ben. I felt like his finishing was a bit of a letdown there. He should have done a bit better. Maybe go for placement rather than power. And in the last couple of minutes, you can see PSV retiring. Ben again, just ghosting down the left-hand side. Whips a great cross in, actually, that nearly went in straight off the goalkeeper. Just not quite enough on it as it goes out of play. But for United, 
They did what I wanted them to do. They got the one in like a lead, and it means they didn't concede an away goal. So moving into the second leg, this is going to hopefully be United heading through to the next round of the Champions League. Other than that, guys, that is how we're going to end today's episode off. If you did enjoy it, a like rate right, would greatly appreciate it. We are getting so close to the subscriber count of 20k. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I will hopefully see you all tonight when I live stream. That is the aim anyways. I'm going to try and go live at some stage tonight. I won't give too much of like a notification. I'm just going to do it at some point. But regardless, I will see you all again for another video very, very soon. Catch you all later. Adios.